let me show you how to create videos in Stable Diffusion. Also, don't forget about my live stream on Sunday. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, we are looking at a Google call up that is called the Forum Stable Diffusion version 0.4. You can also install this locally if you're more tech savvy and you have a pretty strong computer. But in this video, we are talking about the Google call up. For this, you only need to click on the link I have provided in the video description. When you are on this page, up here it says connect, click on that and wait for the green check mark so you have a connection. Afterwards, you need to go through the setup. So you need to click here. It says NVIDIA GPU. This is not your hardware. This is the Google server hardware. So there's these play buttons here when you mouse over the text. Click on that and wait until you see the green check mark. Sometimes it will ask you for permission or for access warning. If you really want to do that, just approve that and also approve connection to your Google Drive because the videos and the files are going to be stored on your Google Drive. So you click here on the next one for the model and output paths. Then you go for the next one here for setup environment, for the Python definitions, for a select and load model. You can click on this here and just let it runs through. After all of this installation is done, you are at the settings and this is where the fun begins. So here we have animation settings and this actually has different modes. You have none and this is very useful when you want to render a batch of prompts. Let's say you have a hundred different prompts you want to try out. You can list them in here, set the animation mode to none and this will render one prompt after the other. I will show you in a second where to put these prompts. The next two are 2D and 3D. This is for morphing in between prompts. Now for this video that I have created from a baby to an old man, this is created with the 3D animation mode. So select this and down here you have a lot of different settings. You can use the max frame defines in the prompt morphing how many frames you want to render. So you can go here to any kind of number. You can also go to a thousand frames, but it's going to take a long time. Down here you have a lot of settings you can see from the angle, from the zoom value, from the translation, which is another kind of movement in the image to the rotation and other settings. Now I use mainly the zoom and also the translation. When you set the zoom to zero, nothing happens. When you set it to one, still nothing happens. You have to go above one, for example, 1.2, and then the zoom is going to start. Personally, I didn't really like the zoom because I feel like it is zooming into the image and makes it blurry rather than zooming into the scene. So I leave this at zero or one and rather use the set translation. Set is going into the image, in this case, into the scene. So you can set this up. When I set this to 0 0.1, you hardly see any movement. The image stays stable. This is what I used with the boy to man animation. When you set this to a higher value, for example, 10, you're going to start to see some movement into the scene. This is what I used in this video where we have a spaceship and then it's zooming into another scene. It can give you rather wild results. So don't expect it to be like a 3D render that you do in Blender or Max 3D. You have a lot more settings here that you can play around with. Down here, you also have video input. I will explain this next after we finish with this part of the video. When you have put in all of the settings, make sure that you click here on the play button and wait for the green check mark. This is important because this saves your settings. You need to do this every time you change the settings. Now here comes the next part for the prompt. These prompts are for none. So if you don't have any animation, just want to try a lot of prompts, you can just put them in here one after another. Make sure that you have quotation marks at the start and the end of your prompt. And then at the end of your prompt, also a comma behind the quotation mark. Below that, you can see the animation prompts. In here, you will set up these prompts and the number in front is not the percentage. This is the frame number when the next prompt is going to take action. When you want to move between different prompts, 
I kind of suggest to you that you use very similar prompts and then only change some factors. Like in this case, I have the same prompt, but I changed the age of the person from baby boy, boy, young man, 50 year old man, 90 year old man. So I get a similar image every single time and then it only ages the person. But you can also go with wildly different prompts and see what kind of crazy animation you get from that. Again, click here on the play button until you see the green check mark so this is safe. You have the size of the image, of course. You have the sampling settings. You can set your custom seat. If you don't want to do that, set it to minus one. You can choose from different samplers in here and see what kind of result you get. You can choose the steps here. Now the first render is using the full amount of these steps, but the second one is only using a small percentage of these steps because you are only making a variation of that first image. So it doesn't need the full steps to create that. This is only true, of course, for the animation, not if you batch render a lot of prompts, then it's always using the full amount of steps. The scale is how closely it sticks to the prompt you have entered. I found that seven is a good value, but you can also play around with that. And then you have a lot more other settings here. Some of them, like here we have the batch settings. The init settings can be interesting when you, for example, have a source image and you want to influence that onto your prompt as an image, then you use here, use init. And if you have the video, you don't want to click this box. You just want to set the strength here. And if you don't do anything here, this is not going to influence your render. Down here in the batch settings, there are some things that are very important. The first one is the batch name. This is not just the name of this render project. This will also create a folder with this name on your permanent Google Drive. So this is very important if you don't want to override or lose any data. So Set this up to a different name every single time. And then down here, when you want to create an animation that is morphing between prompts, you want to set the seed behavior to enter, not to fixed and not to random, so that the seed can build one after another onto the animation and be consistent. When you have set this up, click here on the play button, and this will keep rotating until the project is finished unless this is turning to red and then there is something wrong with your setup or with the prompts. So when we go down here, you can see it shows you some information about your rendering that's going on, also the folder where this is going to be saved. And here you can see for the first image it's going to use 70 steps. Now for the second image, it's only going to use a smaller percentage of that. When the first image is finished, you want to check that you like the aesthetic, but also the positioning of the character because the rest of the animation is going to build on that first image. You can also see down here that now it's only using 24 steps to build the next image from the last image. In this case, maybe you want to restart the animation because the character is off center. So click up here on the stop button and wait for it to stop. And after you've done this, go to the folder and you either want to wait a little bit so you can see that this is loading the new files that have been created, or you just go out of the folder, go back into the folder to actually see what is going on. You select all of the files created and then click here to remove them to your trash so that folder is empty again. After that, simply click here on the play button again to restart your rendering and see if you get a better result. Next, we're going to check out how the video input render works. And for this, I actually have to thank Prophet of the Singularity. So also check out his video. So what you want to do here is to set the animation mode to video input. You can set up the rest of the settings here to taste. But what is really important is here for the video input that you set the video file and also the frames that should be extracted. Now, this is how to upload that file. Over here, you see the three lines. Click on that 
and then also click here on that folder icon. This is the temporary drive for your Google Colab. This means all of these files are going to be deleted when you disconnect your Google Colab. To get the video into this section, simply click on it and drag it onto the drive. After this has finished uploading, go to the file, right click and click copy path. Now you can simply copy the path in here. Below this, you can see extract nth frame. What that means is if you set it to one, it takes every frame of the video. If you set it to two, it takes every second frame of the video, halving your render time. Also, what I have done is to go into a video software to set the video ratio to 512 by 512. So it is exactly the same as we are setting up here for the size of the render so that stable diffusion isn't getting confused. For the prompts, again, you want to put them here into animation prompts. In my videos, I've used only one prompt that is using zero as the starting frame and then uses the same prompt for the rest of the video. Down here in the settings, I set up the same as resolution as the video. For the seed, I set minus one. You can try out different samplers to see what kind of result you're getting. You can also set up the steps here. And this has an influence on how many steps are used based on the weight of the image. Now, let me show you what that means. When you go down here to the batch settings, again, change the batch name here, it's pretty important. Then for the seed behavior, this time you want to set this to fixed because otherwise this is jumping wildly between the individual frames and you're not going to get a good result for your animation. Now here we have the strength and this is how much the prompt or the video is going to be used. When you set this to one, only the video is going to be used, none of the prompt. When you set this to a lower number, like 0.3, this will use a lot of the prompt and not so much of the video. So you want to try and play around with that to see how good your prompt reacts to the video input. If you want to stay rather close to the animation you see in the video, you want to probably use something of 0.5 or above that. If you want to go more artistic and it can be more abstract, you can go below that. This number also means the percentage of render steps that is going to be used. So that means if, for example, you have set up 100 render steps and you set the strength to 0.3, it is only using 30 render steps because the other 70 render steps are basically the input from the video. Then again, click here on the play button and see what kind of result you're getting. I would suggest in this case to render through the first five animation images. So you see if the progression also is good, not just the first image. After you are done, this will result in a folder like this, where you have the images that are the output of stable diffusion, but also the input frames here in a separate folder. Now, as you can see here with these two comparisons of the same video, the coloring of the video has a lot to do with the output. So actually you want to use a video software to adjust the video in the colors and maybe also in the effects to get close to the result you want to have and then change the content of the video to something that is more desirable to you. After all of the images have been rendered, you want to scroll down here to the create video section. Unhook this step for skip video for run all and then simply click on the play button. I left this to 12 frames, which seems to be a nice speed for the animation. But if you want, you can set this to a different frame rate depending also on your input settings. Wait for this to finish until you see the green check mark. You will see a video down here for how the animation has rendered. And you can also find that video in the project folder as the last file. Now it's your turn to create amazing animations. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and see you soon. Bye.